Welcome back pre-calc folks to the second part of our day one unit two notes. We got solving some equations on the first uh, part of the day. We did some quadratics with grouping. We did some completing the square. We did the square root principle and we also did factoring. There is one last option that I'm sure you're all familiar with. It's the quadratic formula. The first question is, what is it? Hopefully you have it memorized. The second question is, where did it come from? And you can't use anything in pre-calc if we don't verify that it is legit. I can't hand you something magic and all of a sudden you say, oh, this works forever. So for those of you that remember it, you can fill in this box. If not, we're going to get it in a minute. Okay? So here's what somebody said. They said, I want to take a quadratic equation, any quadratic equation whatsoever, meaning ax squared, a could be anything bx, b could be anything, c could be anything, and I want to find the roots. That is, roots means y equals 0. What are the x's? So, what some smart person a long time ago did is he said, look, let's take this and let's solve it for x in terms of a, b, and c. And that'll always work to find the roots, whether they're real, imaginary, whether they're irrational, rational, okay? Factoring works sometimes, quadratic, um, I'm sorry, uh, completing the square works sometimes. Quadratic formula always works. But how do we go about doing it? I'll give you a hint. We're first going to complete the square. We're going to group the ax squared and the bx. Pull the c out. But ax squared and bx don't work as well completing the square because when you half it squared, it's going to get messy. So here's where a little bit of the magic comes in a good, good mathematician. They said, let's multiply everything through by 4a. And bear with me for a second. I'm not asking you to recreate this, but I am asking you to understand it. 4a times everything would give me 4a squared, x squared. 4a times bx, 4abx. 4a times c is plus 4ac. What we're going to complete the square with is the first two terms. So we're going to group these two and we're going to leave a hole. 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus something. We're going to put the 4ac on the other side and call it a negative 4ac. We're going to fill the hole by half and square it, then we're going to balance. But what we have square we got to do a little bit of thinking there too. But again, it's not out of your wheelhouse. Okay? What do we have? Well, we have 4a squared x squared. So that means the first two terms are going to be 2ax and 2ax. And if we foiled, I know I need a b because there's a b in that middle term. And if we foil those together, 2ax times 2ax, that's 4a squared x squared. 2ax times 1 would be 2ax. 2ax times 1 would be 2ax. 2ax plus 2ax is 4ax. That's pretty darn close here. The only thing that's missing is the b. So let's do the first outers and inners and see what happens if we fill that hole with b. 2ax times 2ax, 4a squared x squared. 2ax times b is 2abx. 2abx plus 2abx, 4abx. Then, what does that mean when we halved it and squared it? We filled in with a b times b, which is b squared. And if we add a b squared to that side, we got to add a b squared to that side. Now, what does that give us? This thing right here, 2ax plus b quantity squared equals... I'm going to rewrite the right side the other way, the positive term first. B squared minus 4AC. Man, should that sound familiar. Now, I'm getting close to solving this for X. I'm completing the square. Sorry, that's a plus sign in there. How do you get rid of a square? Square root 2AX plus B equals square root b squared minus 4ac. All you guys that are good memorizers, it's taking shape. 
But don't forget, when you square root, it's both plus and minus. We're almost there. Get the plus b out by subtracting b. I'm going to put it in the front. Now we're 99% home. How to get rid of a times 2a to get x alone? Divide, divide. I now have my quadratic formula. We derived it. We can use it. Let's go fill it up in the box. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That works to solve every quadratic equation, no matter what the a, b, and c coefficients are. That's why some people love it. Others, there's a time and a place. That's me. All right, so this one we're going to use a quadratic formula for. What's a? I'm not going to write this down like you did in a2. a is 1, b is negative 4, c is negative 6. x equals, what's the opposite of negative 4? It's 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4. I'll write this part down. a is 1, c is negative 6 all over 2a. I could have put that negative 4 squared in, I guess. x equals 4 plus or minus. We're also going to practice what we do with simplifying this radical. A negative times a negative is a positive 24. 16 plus 24 is 40. So we have 4 plus or minus radical 40 all over 2. Now what? That is nowhere near as cleaned up as it could be. We're going to reduce the radical first. 4 plus or minus. What can I do with the radical 40? 4 and 10, square root of 4, out of the house. 2 radical 10, all over 2. What do I do here? You guys called it triangulate or something like that. You had to divide both by 2. The answer is 4 divided by 2 is 2, plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is 1 radical 10. 2 plus radical 10, 2 minus radical 10. Those are your irrational. They're real but they're irrational roots. Radical 10 is about 3.1, 2 plus 3.1, 2 minus 3.1. Got it. All right, now that we have that tool, we can use it. So let's use it for this one. What do we got? Opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Negative makes that a plus 4 all over 2x equals negative 2 plus or minus radical 8 over 2. You guys are just as fast as me. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1 plus or minus. What's a better name for 8? 2 radical 2 over 2. They cancel. x equals negative 1 plus or minus radical 2. And it also works for imaginary, irrational, everything. Let's do one that is imaginary. Let's shoot down. We don't need to do all of these. I mean, I guess we could since these are our videos. Good practice. Tell you what. Let's pick one more. We'll do two of them. We'll skip number three. Let's do four. Clean that all up. 3x squared minus 2x squared is x squared plus 6x plus 58. I don't know about you. I think I would probably complete the square. x squared plus 6x. Leave a hole. I like to bounce that 58 to the other side. Half of 6, 3 squared is 9. If I add a 9, i got to add a 9. What does that factor to? x plus 3 squared. Negative 58 plus 9 is negative 49. I think I did my math correct, my arithmetic correctly. Two steps to get x alone. Square root. And again, I apologize. I know we do a little bit of imaginary numbers, but very little. x equals. I'm going to subtract that 3 over. Plus or minus. 7i. Got it, got it, got it. 
And the last one, let's go back to quadratic formula again. X equals opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And I'm going to do under the radical, and then I'm going to introduce one more thing. Negative 8 squared is 64. 4 times 28 is 112. 64 minus 112 is negative 48. I'm going to stop right there for a quick second. Because what I'm going to talk about is what are called the nature of the roots. It's not finding them, it's finding the nature. What does that mean? Are they real? Are they imaginary? So let's first do imaginary. What makes it imaginary? This part right here. And that part came from here. B squared minus 4AC. The part under the radical. So if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, the roots are imaginary. Again, we derive this. We can use it. We can use it for a lot of things. Okay. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, that means you would just have 8 over 2, or 8 plus or minus 0 over 2. Therefore, you really get two roots, but they're the same. So I'm just going to call them the same. What it really means, the root is a double. And therefore, if you pictured root as x-intercept, that's where the vertex is. The vertex is sitting on the x-axis. That's why it's the same number twice, a double root. And then the last choice, what if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0? Well, there's actually two cases. There's this case here. Two plus radical ten, two minus radical ten, ten. Ten is a positive number. What type of roots are those? Those are irrational. So if we get a number that's not a perfect square, then they're irrational and greater than zero. And yes, a perfect square. then they're nice and rational. And you could make this into a nice table better than I could, I'm sure. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. And again, that doesn't find the roots. It finds the nature of the roots. So I could go back to this one, and I go negative 48. They're going to be imaginary. Finish that thought if we want to. What are we going to break? 48 into, we're going to break it into 16 and 3. I'm going to break it into negative 16 and 3 because when we pull that out of the house, we get 8 plus or minus 4i radical 3 over 2. I'm going to divide that 2 out and I get 4 plus or minus 2i radical 3. Not only are they imaginary roots, they're irrational imaginary roots. Very possible. We're almost done for the day, guys. I want to show you real quick a calculator exercise, and that is graphing calculator. If I got a screen that looks like this, what's the x-intercept? It's the root, negative 5. What's the y-intercept? 2. And how do I find these? Whoops, sorry. The x-intercept is found by solving the equation for y, enter into the equation. If I'm crossing the x-axis, y equals 0. And therefore, you're finding where they intercept the x-axis. You can either do y2 equals 0 and find intersect, or calculate the zeros by using the graph and calculator second calc number 2, 0. And then for finding the y-intercepts, go to the table, Find zero in the x column because that's what the y-intercept means. 
All right, that's pretty good for the day, folks. If you want to find 